What are three things to avoid if you want to get rich? Three things to avoid if you want to get rich. Let's take a look at this clip. What are three things to avoid if you want to get rich? Number one is people pleasing. In my country, we have a saying that goes like, the friend of everybody is the friend yeah, yeah. of nobody. Yeah. Number two, caring about other people's opinion. There is not a single rich person that I know that cares what other people think of him. They know that the hate never comes from above but it's always the people down there. Number three, doing things yourself. Nothing great was accomplished just with one person. To build a successful business, you need to build a successful team. And business is not a one-man show. Yeah, you, know, you want to do it fast, do it yourself, but you want to go far, build a team. You need a team. You know, anything you would add to that? If you want to get rich? Those, by the way, super, super great topics there. Super great points. Looks like it was rehearsed, but didn't look natural, but... Anyway, he's guy, guy's too perfect. He's too polished. Slick. I like the guy. Yeah, just be around people who are already there in your industry or in, in an area that you're trying to improve in. For example, me, finances were, no, were, no, were not my strong suit, but I was blessed with the opportunity to be able to meet people like Matt, to be able to be around them, not even to pick their brain as much, but just be around them and then their culture, the way they speak, the way they carry themselves, the books they write, that started rubbing off. And then that's when you start asking questions and then going to these meetings and then hanging out in their, in their circles and being in, within that network and seeing the way they carry themselves and experiencing what they experience. And now your identity starts shifting, your identity starts changing to what it is that it needs to be in order to be in that position. Be the smallest guy in the room, man. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And if you are the richest guy, most successful guy in the room, find another room. Yeah. Because everybody's patting you on the back, telling you stuff in your ear. Yeah. You need to be told. That's why I like when you take me to a, a precision, so I feel like I'm the smallest guy in that gym. <laughs> yeah, some of those women are bigger than you. Was, <laughs> You've seen that, right? <laughs> yeah. Bro, sometimes I ask Milton, bro, uh, from the back, is that a is that a guy? Is that a girl? She's stacked. She's putting me to shame. By the way, I'm impressed yeah. their physique. Yeah. It's not a, uh, a male, female, you know, homo, heterosexual type of comment there. It's like, I'm impressed this woman has triceps that looks like that. Matter of fact, I was saying, how do I get my triceps to look like hers? <laughs> I was asking, hers looks like a square. Mine still looks like a, like a hot dog. <laughs> how do I get I hit tri them quads some of these women have? Unbelievable. That's why I love going to that gym. Yeah. Because I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm encouraged. Like, I need to get better. I need to get better. Same thing with me. You know, you're making cash flow millions. You don't ha need to hang around people making $100,000, $200,000 a year. Put yourself around people who are deca millionaires, uh, eight figure earners, multi billionaires because they make you uncomfortable. One of the most heavily reacted to uh, um, videos I've done shorts is when I went on Caleb Box's uh, podcast and I talked about be wary about the guy that you have lunch with. Uh, I won't do business with somebody long term if they keep snapping their necks and flirting with the, with the waitresses and flirting with the members of the opposite sex in my presence. I, I just don't trust. I, I can do business with you maybe once or twice, but long term, I don't know. But let's take a look at this video. It says business with cheaters. Let's take a look at this. You know what my husband says? He's yeah. like, I would never go into business with a guy that cheats on his wife. Absolutely, 100%. Same thing. Same thing. Same thing. He said, if he cheats on his wife, he will cheat me out of any deal and yeah. any, that perforates throughout 100%. his life. 100%. That, that's it. Yeah. I mean, and, and people say, oh, well, you know, there are so many people. We'll, 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 on, on, the, on the repost of this, and we, we create a short of this, we'll, po we'll post everybody that's slandered me on that particular topic. Because, listen, man, if, if I'm in business with somebody and they're wheeling and dealing against our commitments together, they're always looking for a better deal. Look, I, I get you're looking for a better deal, but run the better deal through me. Yeah. If we can improve, let's improve. But don't go behind my back and try to, try to, to, try to cheat me out of the deal. And they still leave, you leave me high and dry. Yeah. And then our clients, our customers, our vendors, our partners, everybody that we've, and our investors, like what happened to your partner? What happened to your partner? You have, you've, you've, got, you've got an obligation. What's, what's your thoughts on it, bro? No, it's uh, it, it, bad for business. To me, it's bad for business. I, um, it happened to me a couple of times where w at least one time I can say I was going to go into business with a gym owner uh, in, within these last two, three years. And the relationship that, that he had with his partner was on and off, on and off, on and off, mm -hmm. toxic, non-toxic. She would step in, his model would change. She would step out, he was all invested into the business. Mm -hmm. She would come back in, she would, he would disappear for days. Yep. And when I started noticing that trend, I knew that it was going to be a very inconsistent business inconsistent flow of cash, inconsistency when it comes down to leadership, when it comes down to his end. And I just, me personally, when it comes down to that aspect, I do not, I, I don't feel comfortable doing business with those kind of people I agree. whatsoever. Let's go to the next video. Great tech. Let's go to the next video here. Uh, marriages fail due to what? Let's fill in the blank.
Number one reason people divorce has nothing to do with infidelity. Most marriages can survive infidelity. The reason they divorce between five and seven years and 50% of these marriages fail is financial stress. And what happens is one of the pair does not have the same objectives financially as the other. Maybe they outspend, maybe they have huge credit card debts, they don't care. But if you're not in sync with each other about money, it ain't gonna work. Uh, Mr. Wonderful, yeah, but uh... The infidelity is a result of what? Or, or the lack of financial, the financial stress is a result of what? Lack of infidelity. So if, you're, you're, if you are not straight on your commitments, of course you're going to have financial stress. Financial stress is a byproduct of, of not getting your relationship right. Yeah. And sometimes people, they, their, their God is their business. Their God is their career. Their God is money. Mm. Their God is you know fame, fortune, recognition, likes on Instagram, and whatever the case would be. It's not... Their, their, their creator, and that's why it's, we're constantly encouraging everybody, find your faith, man. Find your faith. And if you haven't found somebody that has faith, keep looking, which leads me to my next one. Um, be, be careful of also who you surround yourself with. Uh, let's go to the one that says, be careful of the people around you. Let's go to that one. It's a little higher. Uh, be careful of the people around you. Let's take a look at this. Is that T.D. Jakes? And sometimes people only recognize you when you're winning. Because people react differently to you when they perceive you are successful. Versus, that's called fair weather friends, man. That's why I'm glad, bro, I'm glad I met my wife. During, even though I knew about business, but from a financial perspective, I was in a down and out position. I was behind on, uh, I was behind on uh, family court type issues. I was behind. I laid out all my stuff in front of her. Babe, right. I'm going through this, I'm going through that, da, 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 da. I'm financially broken, but I know how to get out of it. But this is where I'm at right now currently. You have a choice right now to either stick with me or punch out and leave, and I wouldn't blame you. She says, I'm sticking with you. (laughs) Oh, snap. That's how you knew, huh? That's how I knew. I got to wife you up. I got to wife up my wife. So, anywho, what's your thoughts on this? I'm I'm, uh, fair weather friends. Not a lot of women are are willing to stick by that. The moment, well, at least in my experience, the moment they, they, they experienced or they even sensed that there was a struggle, next one. Next Which one. I think, ladies, that's, that's an, a mistake you're making. If your man has a vision and your man has a belief, your man has a conviction, your man has a game plan, your man is confident, invest on where he's going. And then judge that based on his daily work habits, his monthly work habits, his year-to-year consistency. Judge him on that. Invest in that man. My wife invested in me on that one. My, my mother saw me... Not judge me from afar. He's like, okay, all right, I'm with you on this. I'll show up to your meetings. <laughs> My little mom, hmm. she showed to me when I was broke. Guess what? Her biggest highlight of her week is when she comes to her office on Tuesday nights. My staff knows. My team knows. When my mom comes, oh, Mr. and Mrs. Paul are here. Oh, they bring her. They have, we have your chairs. I don't even. I don't even ask them to do it. My team honors my mom and dad when they come in. So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, click right here.